I hope you can hear me. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Tal, and the organizers for this fantastic opportunity for all of us to come together, all the new friends. So as Steve said, I'm Orly Alter, and I'm here representing our University of Utah spin-off uh, Prism AI, your operating system for AI-powered drug development and biomarker discovery. So we all agree that disease as well as health are complex and factors across the entire multiome, at the very least the entire genome, affect their every aspect. But biomarkers remain limited to just one, mostly one, and sometimes a few hundred genes. And that's uh, 20 years after the Human Genome Project. This is because typical AI cannot discover effective biomarkers from the real life clinical data. Um, the data come from small cohorts, uh, they are noisy, there are systematic batch effects and normal variations that mask the biomarkers or in AI language the predictors. Clinical labels are rarely available when you want them. The data are complex in structure. And as I mentioned, small cohorts, so that means skinny. We have very many features and few patients. Skinny data also means imbalanced. And the data come from all those different stages in the, in the drug development process. A at PRISM, our AI is underlined by our algorithms, the multi-tensor comparative spectral decompositions. So we heard uh, in this panel earlier about tensors and multi-tensors. Uh, <laughs> one might think, uh, yeah, that's the future that's happening now. And uh, those algorithms, uh, are, they are data agnostic, they're unsupervised, and we developed them to extend quantum mechanics and to overcome the typical AI obstacles by not requiring large amount of, amounts of data, not requiring balanced data, not requiring feature engineering. And in that uh, PRISM outperforms, dare I say, all methods out there for your clinical biomarker and drug development uh, process. Uh, that includes uh, some uh, now traditional methods like the singular value decomposition where we invented uh, the eigengene back in the day as well as uh, the methods that we're all very excited about today. Uh, that's uh, deep learning, neural networks, and deep learning that uh, end up biasing the models with synthetic data or imputed data because uh, they cannot uh, deal with the imbalances, the natural imbalances in the clinical data, and they require very large amounts of data that are simply not out there and possibly will never be out there for clinical trials. So just to give you uh, a sense, uh, the back end of the envelope uh, calculation, if you want to get a predictor that looks at the entire 3 billion nucleotide genome, you would need 3 billion patient training sets. Uh, I will present to you some of our uh, proof of concepts and uh, primarily our uh, recent proof of concept comes from our experimental validation in a retrospective clinical trial of a genome-wide pattern. Yes, we're looking at the whole genome. Here we're looking at copy number alterations. And as I will show you, this is, uh, we validated it experimentally, computationally, mathematically. It is a predictor of uh, life expectancy and response to standard of care, in this case, in glioblastoma brain cancer, which is the most accurate and the most precise. This predictor, we experimentally validated in a skinny data set. Again, the whole genomes, but from just 79 patients. Yet it is generalizable to the population at large, is one example for the generalizability of it. Comparing the phenotypic distribution of the 79 patients with the GBM population um, uh, as manifested in the SEER epidemiology database of the NCI, we see that they are statistically indistinguishable. As another example for the generalizability of the predictor and really our approach, 
It was mathematically discovered and computationally validated before our uh, clinical trial. Um, the predictor, this is the g disease genotype if you want, repeatedly in federated, separated data sets, all skinny of whole genome sequencing uh, profiles, uh, say from 85 patients, astrocytoma patients, of uh, Affymetrix profiles from only 59 uh, lower grade astrocytoma patients, and um, even Agilent profiles from, I guess, 251 patients. So we have all of these different platforms, different grades of the disease. So glioblastoma, that's grade four um, astrocytoma, and then lower grades astrocytoma as well. And in all these cases, in a federated manner, we again and again discovered the same predictor that correlates with the um, poor prognosis of one year survival from diagnosis. We found similar predictors looking um, at different types of cancers. So for example, in adenocarcinomas, and again, different types of adenocarcinomas, so uterine, ovarian, and lung, we found uh, a predictor of survival and response to platinum, which is um, the first line uh, chemotherapy treatment for many of these diseases. And uh, just like the astrocytoma predictor, this too was identified using unsupervised learning in federated skinny, balanced and row data sets with minimal pre-processing and with no feature engineering. We found uh, two uh, predictors in neuroblastoma, pediatric neuroblastoma, both in tumor and whole blood samples. And uh, the discovery was in whole genome data from just 101 patients and the validation where we demonstrated transfer learning that is really lab protocol and, uh, sorry, lab platform and protocol agnostic, just like all our work so far, was for target capture sequencing where we look at just less than 1% of the whole genome of uh, just about 400 uh, patients. All of these predictors, you remember, we are a prism. So the predictors are patterns that we find in the data. And uh, we are separating them from other data patterns. Uh, that was discussed earlier in the session as well. Our separation is completely blind. Um, it's uh, agnostic to, say, the normal variations in the data. Yes, it's able to, yet it's, uh, it's able to separate those normal variations from the disease-specific variations. For example, uh, while we're blind to um, the sex of the patients, uh, I'm showing you here in the top panel, we see one predictor of neuroblastoma outcome relative to the data it was derived from. And in the pa uh, bottom panel, we see a separation in the same data of uh, the normal male to female variation in the X chromosome numbers. And this is super, it's exactly the same data. We have all these uh, variables uh, coming to, to being superimposed on one another and our uh, prism is able to separate them so that we're uh, ending up concentrating on the disease specific biomarkers if you want. I, I want to uh, mention that there are, I'm showing you here the X chromosome, which we're all familiar with, but there are so very many other variations that we can expect to be removed from the data that we actually don't know about because the separation is blind. It's X, race, and ethnicity agnostic. And also I want to mention that by doing uh, this kind of analysis, we were able to correct gender labels in the uh, TCGA database. Uh, labels in databases, even the best ones like the NCI TCGA, CGA come with errors. That, the fact that we can separate normal variation also means that we can find predictors, disease-specific predictors that are encompassed in regions of normal variations. For example, we found this predictor that is encompassed in the X chromosome of uh, response to platinum-based chemotherapy in ovarian cancer. 
again, most methods, they just exclude those regions that are known to be normally varying, such as the X chromosome, to the extent that uh, the NCITCGA published a nature report on ovarian cancer without a single data point from the X chromosome, not even in the supplementary materials. And here uh, we find uh, actual information that could help us in treating the patients. Similarly, we're blindly and without any labels and without any a priori knowledge, separate batch effects from our predictors. Here I'm showing you uh, batch effects that separate, uh, here I'm showing you batch effects in whole genome sequencing that separate the genomic characterization centers uh, and appear uh, correlated with the guanine cytosine content variation. There are batch effects. Um, in microarray data, um, so Affymetrix data, Agilent data, and I'm running out of time, so I'm going to run over here. But just so you know, we've seen all these batch effects and we're separating them all. So in addition to finding biomarkers, we can also find mechanisms, and I'll talk about it a little bit more in a second. But here is an example for a mechanism that we mechanistically, a mechanism that we uh, experimentally verified for uh, DNA replication to affect RNA expression. And we, by going from East data to human data, essentially demonstrating that PRISM AI can correctly predict previously unknown uh, mechanisms, cellular, evolutionary, as well as physical. To put, going back to the GBM predictor and putting it in context, for 70 years, the best indicator of a patient's survival has been age and diagnosis, yet recurring alterations have been recognized and repeated previous attempts to associate them with the patient outcome failed. Even attempts that look at the same data where we looked at. In our clinical trial, we again uh, validated that this whole genome predictor is most, is most accurate. In all data sets where we tested it, it uh, reached 75 to 95% concordance, and it was always more accurate than age in all the other predictors, especially the one gene tests uh, that are used uh, for GBM. The predictor is not just accurate, it is also statistically independent. It is adding information that is currently not being used in the clinic. It is most precise. We have reproducibility of 100% looking at platforms uh, such as BGI sequencing, uh, using complete genomic machines at Shenzhen and Illumina machines at the Broad Institute. And um, this is compared to less than 70% reproducibility, which is the community consensus as uh, determined by the Sanger Institute. The whole genome predictor is interpretable, and here I'm happy to say that we identified back in 2010 drug targets that now uh, we're hoping to very soon show, finally publish, uh, and show that, yes, they, are, uh, they sensitize uh, the tumors to the treatment, and uh, our experimental collaborators tell us it's a foregone conclusion based upon the currently available data that has been collected all the way from 2010 to today. Um, we have follow-up results from the trial. Uh, we show correct prospective prediction for the patients who were still alive. We show, again, 100% precise um, reproducibility using clinical, uh, using clinical sequencing. And we established that a, a tumor's whole genome uh, actually confers greater risk than every other parameter, including chemotherapy, and it's only surpassed by a patient's access to radiotherapy. So we expect our biomarkers to help standard of care clinical trials and preclinical drug development. This is our proof of principle and uh, that uh, PRISM AI is uniquely suited to biomarker discovery, including your biomarker discovery. So, um, come work with us to blindly remove batch effects and normal variation, integrate uh, multi-omic data with other data of interest from small imbalanced cohorts across the entire drug development cycle to create the next generation of drugs and biomarkers. And uh, we didn't have a chance to get a group photo, but here we are, here's a website. Uh, check us out on the website uh, and come talk to us. Thank you.